let's go ahead and put the whole thing together. Generally, going to be played on uh, what they what they call the ponce, the ponche, ponche, the bombo. Let's call the bombo. The bombo. Okay, it's on the the, the yeah, three no. side of the clave on the end of two. So if you got a two three clave, one two three four one and two three four one and two and three one and two. Three. So that's a really standard way to put the bass drum. In. Now there are other patterns, but if you're not doing anything else but putting the bass drum there, you're going to be stylistically correct. And interesting enough, they really never play the one. The one is not really a, the focal point of, of the music in any way, shape, or form. Uh, a lot of times, uh, drum fills will end on the four, or the end of four, uh, but you're never really pushing the one. I mean, I can sometimes play the bass drum on the one uh, as a variation, but I'm not glued into putting the one down like you are in, in North American pop, funk, all that. Where funk music is all about the one. Um, in, in Cuban music, it's it's not so boxy. It's not so square. You don't have to push that one every time. Um, so the the bass drum you're going to hear me be play is going to be played on the and of four a lot of times. Um, okay. So the reason I'm showing you the rumba is because it's really where we start to get these these syncopated rhythms that are eventually applied to the timbales. It's two two metal drums. They were actually um, they originally were from timpani. The timpani was brought over um, and to the island of Cuba, and over years they got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and then they chopped off the bottom. And it's just a one. And they look like, for lack of a better description, they look like two metal snares. Basically, they're either brass or steel, um, and they're played backwards for drummers. So the high end, the high drum is on the right, the low end is on the left. And there's, like I said, there's no bottom head. They're put on a stand. Uh, and you're going to play the side of the, the shell. Because the, the, the lugs, if you're, you, since you don't have a bottom head, there's only one lug. And so you've got a, a quite a large area here uh, where there's nothing uh, to get in your way of playing. So you'll play this shell. Uh, and then you'll play bells. So a lot of this stuff that we do on drum set is directly taken from the timbales. Uh, those parts there. Now, actually, uh, I had an interesting conversation a while back with a percussionist, a very famous percussionist named Mike Spiro, who lives out in the Bay Area, teaches at Indiana University now. Um, and his theory is that actually the drum set preceded the timbales in playing uh, these rhythms. And basically, in Cuba, what you had is we talk about the danson being separated, and then you had the the, the the rumba forming. So you had these two completely separate musical entities um, that had nothing to do with each other. But eventually they did start to get uh, combined. And the, the uh, important thing that brought them together was the next step, which is a music form called son. And son is really music from the hills. It was country music. It was played predominantly with guitars and a Cuban guitar called the Trace, which is a six-string guitar. It has two sets of doubles, I guess. Is that the mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Three, three, doubles. Three, three doubles. Set, yeah, three, three sets of doubles. So it's six strings, um, and then an acoustic guitar. The only uh, percussion in the, in the song originally was the bongo. Mm -hmm. And, oh, that's true. The only drum, I should say, was, oh, the, yeah. uh, was the bongo. And then you would have somebody playing clave, and then you would have, uh, generally, the lead singer would play maraca or, or, or clave. 
the star of uh, the early uh, song groups were the, was the bongo player. And generally, the bongo player was the, the same guy that would be playing the quinto in the rumbas. He was usually the most uh, accomplished drummer, so he was really like the bad, the, the baddest player. So the, the bongo is, is a, uh, definitely a, a Cuban instrument. The, the conga is really um, Cubans' replication of what they lost in Africa. Um, but the bongo is purely the Cuban. Bongo. It's there was nothing prior to the uh, the bongo anywhere in the United in the world. There was no two drums together in Africa. So this is a definitely a uniquely Cuban instrument, and it was the foundation for son. So the bongo player would basically be playing riffs, soloing throughout the uh, the son uh, ensemble. The, the rhythm based uh, around the martillo. So let's let's play them. Have them show the martillo pattern. It's just like, kind of like the basic concept that would hold the time together for a song group. Can you play a clap or something? Mm -hmm. part it's very syncopated it's still following clave uh, in the phrasing but uh, so that's happening so you have the dance on happening in one society you have the uh, the rumba happening in the other and then you have from the, the mountains and the hills you have son and it's all starting to combine come together uh, the dance on started in the late 1800s and you have the, uh, the music all time coming together into the cities in the, in the early 1900s, 1920s. Um, when the bongo player isn't playing the bongo, he's playing the campana, the bell. And this is a very important part too because this is gonna, this is gonna be a, a major part that we're gonna play as drum set players as well. This is a, something that still goes on today. When the chorus happens of a, of a song, the bongo player puts the bongos down and picks up a bell. In a Latin jazz context, it has to do with energy. So for a piano solo, maybe he'll play bongo. Uh, but if the piano is really just, the whole ensemble is just really at a height musically, he may pick up the bell to drive that a little bit more. Same thing with the horn player. If the horn player is soloing, we may start off on bongo, but as we, the energy gets built, you're gonna go to the, uh, the bell. And if there's no bongo player on the gig, that's the drummer's responsibility. So I'll demonstrate that after Carlos shows you the basic concept. So look. Yeah, yeah. So again, this is clave specific as well. The more syncopated part that he plays, he's going to play a part that's less syncopated, and then a measure that's more syncopated, and that's going to follow clave. So one, two, one, two, three. So you got that one, two, three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one. So very, very important because if you're on a gig with people that know the music and you flip that, right? So if the clave is here, one, two, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, and you put the syncopated side at the beginning. going to be comfortable for that minute. And a lot of times you, you'll, it's called crossing clave. So you'll see guys doing this. You know, they'll turn around and they'll be like, you know, that means you're, you're crossed. It means stop. Change it. Um, and so as uh, the music developed, that's what happened. So that was really the first specific bell pattern that, that developed in, in Cuba. Now, the, the, uh, the uncertainty is that how everything else developed really dictates. So what happens eventually is the, uh, the music develops like anything else. And in song, they add a piano player, then they add a trumpet, the ensembles grow, and eventually they add a congo player. And that becomes extremely 
popular. We're talking about the early 1920s, 30s. Sonam just sweeps uh, the, the, the island. Actually, uh, it goes out. There's a, a couple of groups that become famous because you start having recordings at that time. Vic, was a Vic Trolla starts recording everybody. They go to Paris and, and you know, lots of, uh, uh, of that kind of um, music is starting to sweep across the world. So the, the, uh, the Dan Son ensembles uh, kind of start developing as well. And they start adding the Congo drum. Interesting thing though, because there were no weren't white guys playing congas. There were no uh, people of direct Spanish descent playing congas. They, they were really only descendants of slaves at that time. Although they were all, by the 1920s, you're all talking about all being free. They were not really any slaves. But a lot of times where the, uh, the Dan Son groups, which are really now playing what's uh, considered called charangas, um, they would add a congo player, but in a lot of the uh, high society places they had to play at, you congo player had to play behind the curtain. <laughs> so you'd hear it, but you wouldn't see it because it was you know, considered uncouth. So eventually that changed. Um, and then the guys were on stage. Um, so you had all of that happening. Um, and then what you had is by the time the 40s developed, you had big uh, casinos, right? The, the, the mob goes into, into Havana. They're opening casinos. And they want to entertain all of the people that are coming. So they put together these massive shows where you'll have maybe a jazz big band will be playing. And then they'll have uh, a rumba group will come out and play. And then maybe part of the act will be a, so a song group. So you have all of these musical styles kind of converging for the very first time. And an interesting concept, back to the, the, the percussionist Mike Spiro, so there would be a drummer. There's a, there's a drum set player who's playing big band jazz uh, and maybe some sort of like, mambo really it hasn't been developed yet, but maybe some sort of uh, uh, more kind of ethnically cleansed version of, uh, of uh, some of the other forms of music like the dance on is going on. But when the rumba group comes out, the drummer's like, well, I'm done. There's nothing for me to do. I'm going to go over to the bar and have a drink, right? But the, the, the promoter sees the guy hanging out at the bar, and he's like, hey, you, I'm paying you to play, not to drink, right? And the guy's like, well, there's really nothing for me to do. You've got this Roomba group here. And he's like, well, figure it, figure it out. Play something. So Mike Spiro's uh, opinion is that that's really where a lot of this stuff started to get developed onto the drum set and then onto the timbales because they were, like I said, these were separate musical entities until this started to happen. So basically, whether that's exactly how it went down or not, these rhythms started to become played onto the drum set um, or the timbales. So it's uh, when, maybe at the exact same time. But let's assume that uh, they happen at the exact same time. So if there's a rumba happening, what I'm gonna play is the pattern I showed you, the palito pattern, right? But that doesn't get played necessarily, um, at least in its in entirety, when all of a sudden these three forms of drums were put together. So all of a sudden you had the bongo player from the song group playing with the, the congo players from the rumba group. And even though you still have clave, the pattern gets changed a little bit. It's now considered uh, what they call cascara, um, which was which the shell, is that what cascara? The cascara, word cascara, the cascara word is uh, the outside part of the flute. The outside part of the flute? Yeah, of the flute, the flute. Oh, the flute. 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 Okay. So it's really just like a... It's, it's a word they adapted to the, the cascara. Okay. So the, the cascara is, they teach it in the United States, they say it just means the, the shell, but obviously that's not quite correct. 